Welcome everyone, welcome. And once again, thank you for being with us on this journey of sharing 1 million missions of coaches, trainers, and consultants. You already learned so much from all the other guests we had, and there is so much more to come. Today, our special guest is Ruchi Pool. Welcome Ruchi, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you so much for having me over with you, Diana. It's an absolute pleasure. It's an honor to me too. Ruchi is a wellness coach, holistic therapist, and yoga teacher. After about a decade in IT, working across continents, Ruchi discovered yoga and healing methods became her calling. Her aim is to use traditional sciences in alliance with modern techniques and medical research to empower all to be happy and healthy. Felicity with the iconic Women Creating a Better World Award by the Women's Economic Forum, she's a speaker at national and international forums. Based out in New Delhi, India, she conducts holistic therapy, workshops, retreats, events, and yoga sessions for audiences across the globe under the banner of holistic wellness with IKEA. Ruchi has been an advisor for health and mental health-based organizations. She featured in Business World, she rose in Dieful Mind Specialist and Nine Zests. She has guided several executives and entrepreneurs with personal leadership coaching, and she also delivered leadership talks with organizations such as IBM, Women Innovator, Women in Public Sector, Union Bank, and Young Leaders Summit, to name just a few. Welcome, Ruchi. I am honored, and your bio is very impressive. Thank you so much for being with me today. Right. Thanks so much, Diana. When I sent it over to you, I didn't know you would be you know, reading out the whole thing, but thanks for such an elaborate introduction. And uh, yeah, pleasure, pleasure so much to be here. This is very impressive, and I believe that our audience needs to learn out of it, because when you increase your um, credibility and your visibility on the market, automatically you attract also more clients. And I believe that you have this credibility built throughout the years. So thank you once again for being with me. And I would like to start our interview by asking you our first question. What is your story and how did you start on this journey? And what is your mission today? All right, uh, it's a very, very interesting question. Um, I just sort of fell into this journey, Diana, to be very honest. And initially when I started off, I knew that this was my calling in some way, but I had no idea I would be doing it this way after eight years of uh, beginning there. I was actually a very happy IT professional and IT consultant and I was working in Australia and I was earning loads, I was living the life, I was doing all of that. Uh, but just before that, actually, before I came back to my country, India, a um, few years before that, I had started my meditation journey. And that started changing me from the inside out very profoundly. And um, that had come as a matter of epiphany that I had felt. When, just before I started meditation, I'm going in the reverse chronological order, actually, yeah. Um, I have faced with quite a few very serious health, um, you know, disorders and a lot of challenges in my life. Although on the surface, everything seemed very nice and that, you know, I had everything in my life going for me, but there was something missing inside. And um, I realized in that moment um, after I was diagnosed with uh, endometriosis, um, which is a very, very painful condition, as some of us might know, um, that that life wasn't for me. And, um, you know, it was meant for something different. So just through that, it sort of encouraged me to drop everything in that life and start my life from scratch again. But I left it to the universe. And after that, I sort of did resume another job. I left that city. I left everybody I knew. I left that whole lifestyle. And I started a new life, but in the same career path initially. But it was when I came back from Australia that I decided that I did not want to pursue a corporate career anymore. And I started dabbling into other things. 
I've even worked for the radio channel for a couple of months. <laughs> and I've interviewed celebrities and done that. And, you know, it was very exciting, uh, that period as well, when one of my colleagues was pursuing a yoga course, yoga teacher training course. And it was a part-time course. It suited me well. And I wanted to do yoga since I was a child. My grandfather used to teach at the age of 97. I'm not sure if it was 97 or 99. But he, he was teaching till that age. So I've been a fan of it forever. So I went into that. And very fortunately, it wasn't a very typical teacher training course. And it was what is called a yoga vidya course. It was a yogic science course. Okay. So I got to know a lot about the depths of yoga through that. And the, the change, impact, transformation it can bring about from the inside out. Um, firstly, for our health conditions, it's really, really impactful. And secondly, for our whole being, for our whole consciousness. As I started deeper, I realized that, you know, what the world thought it was instead of asking us to do and all, that's the least of it. And I just went, kept going deeper and deeper into that. And like I said, you know, I just kept following where the universe led me. And this is where I am now. That's very impressive. Thank you so much, Ruchi, for, for sharing that with us. And this uh, makes me think about the fact that many people are trying to find their purpose in life. And they think that there is this big thing they need to, to still uh, to keep thinking about it, that someday maybe it's going to come. And this reminds me of my own journey because it's uh, just a matter of discovering. So it's not a matter of really just sitting and thinking, uh, what could I do with my life? But it's really just walking the path and seeing where the path is leading you. And this is your experience. And I am very impressed by what, um, by what you mentioned, that you actually discovered your calling by just trying. What would be your advice, Ruchi, for those out there who don't dare to do this, who don't dare to take action and to do this big change that you did yourself for your life? You know, there is this uh, yoga philosophy book, which is very famous, called Bhagavad Gita. And it says it is better to do your own duty or follow your own calling imperfectly than it is to do somebody else's job or follow somebody else's calling. And this is something I've experienced in my life as well. It hasn't been easy, Diana. It's been a struggle. It's been an uphill battle. Uh, from when I started, and particularly because, um, you know, you see that there, there are, this is not a mainstream thing, it's something different, right? And nowadays, people are picking it up, uh, and, you know, wanting to become your teacher, and there's so much with this in the last two or three years, especially, but back when I started, it wasn't a mainstream profession at all, even now, it's quite a bit of a struggle. But with that, then I discovered so much. I started creating my own processes. I have also delved as being an entrepreneur in the wellness space just to bring out the reality of these holistic sciences and stuff to people and for people to know their benefits, um, uh, not from a very profit-making angle, but from the reality of things, the way they are. So it's, it's been an uphill battle, and, um, but it's worth it. Feel fulfilled from the inside out. That is the real, um, those are the real riches which sort of, you know, um, for which you're living life, really. No matter how much, you know, money somebody has, now I'm not saying that being poor is good. It's not. But if I was a multimillionaire, but surrounded by people who I couldn't relate to, surrounded by a lifestyle that wasn't enriching, that was throttling me from the inside. How could I ever have been happy? It's not possible. So it's really worth it. But also, um, you know, balancing the realities of life and uh, knowing the practicalities of life and going along with that as well. So if somebody is thinking of just dropping their job and then following their calling um it's not a very good idea it's good to do that in a methodical way in a planned way and gently sort of seek into that 
this uh, this makes me smile because um, I also had this idea to just drop my job entirely and then move into a different path. And uh, I was lucky enough to have people around me who told me, okay, let's think it through, let's uh, make a plan, let's take a few steps first and see how this goes and then really jump, really do the big jump. And uh, this has been also my journey. Thank you so much for sharing this with us, Ruchi. I would like to ask you, do you think that meditation and well-being and yoga could influence our leadership skills? Yeah, for one, we need to uh, just sort of, if you break down leadership skills, if I ask you, Rana, what would be on the top five or ten parameters that you would say would form leadership skills in a person? Yes, yeah, so for me, uh, what is the most imp important in terms of leadership is uh, caring about other people. And yeah. this has also been my experience that um, whenever I was not balanced with myself, okay. this, um, did, this had a negative impact on my team, on the organization, and it never led to something good. So it was always good for me to find my own balance and find that I am well and according to my true nature, wherever I am uh, in a meeting or whether I am leading my team and if not, it's not working. And this is why I asked this question because this made me think whether by uh, having um, this care for other people would mean that first we need to care about ourselves and our well-being. In order to give to someone else something, we need to have it first. So I'm going to take it from a top-down approach for here. So the first uh, sort of quality in a leader, whether that is a you know, leader as an individual or, you know, for people or leading a corporate organization or a bank or anything, is to be in tune with the surroundings, is to be very much in tune with all the influencing factors of the moment that are related to their uh, role as a decision maker. Right? So it's the first thing that's required. So unless somebody is aware enough, so strong enough, unless somebody is evolved enough, nobody can actually do that. So the more evolved somebody's consciousness is, the more aware somebody is, the more somebody will be aware of the influencing factors of their surroundings. And secondly, they'll need to be in the moment and in tune with the reality of the moment and not be living in the past or future, right? That's the first thing that is required for any person, right? So I think I don't even need to explain how meditation or yoga can bring that about, right? So that's number one. And secondly, once somebody is able to be aware of all of these, that person needs to have the ability to um, process all of this information and I'm not talking about now punching numbers over here, but mentally be able to do that, okay? Have very sharp mental faculties because our mental faculties are so sharp normally as human beings that we can process millions of pieces of information considering all the parts of mankind itself or the evolution of this planet and uh, you know maybe future prospects, uh, 100 years you know, ahead of us, or maybe a couple of hundred if we are national level leaders and uh, you know, all of the present um, you know, together. So we should be able to process all of that information and that is an, a split second in the human mind. To be able to have that powerful ability in us in tune and very sharp, these sciences are very, very powerful. That's so that is their main purpose to actually enhance the ex executive functions of the brain. Because when we are in a relaxed state, in a balanced state, we are able to tap into the very higher centers of our executive brain or those uh, faculties of our mind. If we are in a stress mode or if you're in that, you know, typical go, go, go mode <laughs> that is so, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, adulated in a lot of our cultures, then we are mostly operating from the limbic brain, which is our, you know, um, primitive brain. So we are unable to, uh, you know, process much information. We are unable to have that 
our ability to stay in tune with the present, um, in the with the bigger picture, and also decision making abilities. They are part of the executive brain. So all of that becomes very, very sharp with these kind of practices. So this is just to start off, you know, where uh, and how it can really help us. If you see, actually, in the Prime Minister of Canada, <laughs> he practices yoga. The Prime Minister of India practices yoga. And yoga is not about uh, really telling you if we are practicing power yoga, one asana after another in a very... Uh, workout kind of weight doesn't work that well with uh, the holistic terms of our um, being or our whole holistic system as, as one. Um, it has to be done in the way that is required in the moment by our body, mind, and energy. So again, we have to be very much in tune with our own system um, to be able to develop those skills as well. So the first step to even practicing these is to build a certain level of awareness and that's where a lot of us begin. Thank you so much, Ruchi. This is very impressive and uh, I can see and I can feel that you have a lot of knowledge around this area and that you help many people. I was uh, thinking whilst you, was, you were talking that this awareness you are talking about is not always present and people just start uh, working or doing things on an automatic pilot. And sometimes we react in a certain manner based on jealousy, based on other negative uh, emotions in a team or with our manager or with uh, colleagues. And this really impacts all the other team members. How could we rectify this? How can we become more aware of our emotions and is it a matter of blocking them where they happen or is it a matter of healing them or what can we do as a first step? Yeah, I'm gonna give the very typical analogy of a uh, master surfer over here. What happens when you know we are novices and we don't know how to surf through waves at all, let alone larger waves. We actually struggle to even stand on a surfing board and we are unable to balance ourselves. Whereas somebody who's a master surfer can go in the middle of huge waves and still navigate his way through very gracefully and also get a thrill out of it, right? So that's the same with our whole internal being, especially with our emotions. Because certain emotions, especially the negative emotions, can hijack our mental faculties and then take over our actions. So first of all, how to identify something like that is coming up and to be able to actually observe it instead of being led by it. So not to come in its grasp, but to remain separate from it, be an observer of it, and then sort of masterfully navigate it and keep it aside and be able to take action, think without being carried away or being affected by that anymore. Because these are natural things. These emotions were given for a reason to us. It's not that they don't have a purpose. But intellectually and knowledge-wise, understanding the purpose of each, as well as being able to maneuver these and around them, um, comes again through these yoga mindfulness practices. Thank you so much, Ruchi. Thank you very much. It comes with practice. It yes. comes with practice. It's not easy to do in the first go. So it's just like running a marathon. Uh, if I was to run a 20 kilometer marathon, I wouldn't expect uh, myself to do it on the first day. I'd probably, you know, if I haven't run ever before, I'd probably start at 200 meters today <laughs> and not to 20 kilometers. So that's how it goes. Start small and then build on it. It's a process and learning and building up faculties takes time, doesn't come in a day. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ruchi. And this makes me realize that the issue I see nowadays, especially in a career in organizations, is that this um, lies within the power of each individual, meaning that each person needs to be aware that she or he needs to do this work and it's a matter of rituals and building the habit 
But the question is, I know that there are many trainings out there and uh, maybe even coaching sessions. And I have done myself in my organization, but they are doing it like uh, we do a three days um, training about uh, emotional intelligence. We do a three days uh, about uh, negotiation for leaders, for example. But do you think that this is really the solution? Because as you mentioned, it's a matter of building that habit. So how can we incorporate this habit and this ritual into each one of the individuals in the organization? What can the company do? So this is a beautiful, beautiful question. I'm so glad you asked that, Diana, because uh, this is for our super leaders or managers to take up and bring to our company culture. So just like in Asia, we have stand-up meetings every morning. It'd be good to, you know, have a sort of quick round of uh, what I did to develop my emotional intelligence today. Maybe something like that. And it's one minute in a day uh, for a person, for each person. And it's just so, so, so useful. So something like that, and just the trainings, like you said, alone, we only have that much impact, but if we start setting a culture which is appreciative of everybody around and we help people understand each other's value, that it's impossible to um, grow alone or even survive alone, we need everybody else around us. We need that beautiful environment around us. Um, and uh, so that is just about you know, being able to survive. And if the environment is good around us, we will be able to thrive in it. And that's why a lot of us want to join those wonderful companies which have such a good culture around and which you support it so well, right? So, but there are many, many ways of doing that. Something even as simple as having an appreciation day in a week. So maybe Monday, first half, you get people to put a note on the board somewhere, uh, you know, just appreciating somebody else anonymously for one thing they did last week or for, or for who they are in any way. So just something as simple as that really works wonders. And of course, like I said, if, uh, you know, something like a short meditation um, can be made a practice, that can do wonders because then that works from the inside out. Our sort of shell is broken from the inside because then we are letting the universe through and flow through us. And the universe doesn't distinguish between any two people or call anybody better or you know, worse than the other. We're all the same. And even when we come in touch with ourselves, we realize our codependencies, our interdependencies, and uh, that how closely related we are to each other and we're pretty much sort of byproducts of each other. We are made of each other. We're not made for each other. We are made of each other because now the thoughts that I am voicing out are flowing through and also seeping through you in some way because you're also pondering through them. You're mulling over them. And so these will with the people who are listening to this. Um, so, you know, we, we are made of each other so much. And um, once we realize that, you know, how valuable we are to each other and, and be a total game changer. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. I feel, I feel very inspired right now. And uh, really, I feel like um, I am at the same time in peace, but energetic. And for a very long time, I was wondering whether this is possible to have both states. And I am uh, living it right now. So I am happy to experience this with you. <laughs> Thank you so yes. much once again. It's, it's your energy which, uh, which goes beyond the screen and beyond uh, anything. So that's amazing. I would exactly. like to yes unseen osmosis we are in with each other you know when we walk into a room sometimes it just feels so good and sometimes we feel so restricted and not nice so that is all to do with the energy of the place we are so closely interrelated with our energies there is no boundary to our energy whatever energy we carry is way across to the people around and vice versa so uh there's no way we can, you know, not be impacted or influenced by whatever is not just around us, but whatever is there on the planet. So Absolutely. one person gets affected, everybody does. One person rises up, everybody grows. That's also the rule of consciousness. 
that when one person evolves, then the whole collective evolution of consciousness happens. Wow. So, yeah, so they yeah. have been actually, I, if you have a little time, I can narrate, uh, you know, the story of, or the research on dogs regarding this. Yes. And it's a very interesting study in which they actually trained dogs uh, for a trick in one part of the world and in one part of the globe. Now, I don't remember the exact countries because I sort of don't remember this story from years by uh, very well. And um, so then they sort of tried that trick with a few dogs on the other side of the planet. And these dogs could didn't take like a fifth of the time to learn it and then do this. So they repeatedly tried that and it worked. So if one set of dogs learned the trick in one part of the world, the rest of the dogs in any other part of the world would know that much better, just inherently. So that is how collective consciousness works. We owe it to the world to develop ourselves, to grow ourselves, to make ourselves more beautiful because we're making that part of the universe more beautiful. Wow, that's very inspiring. Thank you so much. I am so honored and uh, so excited to have you here. I am learning myself so much from you. And um, I would like our audience to remember these words because these are extremely important for us to be able to design our tomorrow and to create the life that we want to live. Thank you once again, Ruchi. Before we close our interview, I would like to ask you, who are you serving and how can people contact you? So um, anybody who is interested in growing, developing, becoming a better version of themselves, uh, making a better version of their lives in any way at all, are most welcome to get in touch with me. Um, I don't work with very small children, but apart from that, uh, all other age groups are welcome. Above the age of eight years is all good, up to the age of 108, I believe. And um, and so I, you know, it could be for yoga, it could be for meditation and mindfulness, it could be um, as uh, if somebody desires wellness coaching. So wellness actually defines all the eight aspects of wellness uh, as per WHO, that part of financial wellness, I can guide you with all other pillars. And um as a holistic therapist, I can help you in overcome and potentially reversing all kinds of lifestyle disorders, which are also called chronic disorders. Um, these are all the uh, ones that come under the gamut of cardiovascular, neurological, neurodegenerative, respiratory, digestive, and all of them basically um, that are non-infectious in nature. Thank you so much, Ruchi. And how can people contact you? I'm available on social media as Holistic Aikya. So that's Holistic A-I-K-Y-A. Holistic Aikya. So feel free to reach out to me on my social media or holisticaikya at gmail.com. Amazing. Thank you so much. Don't hesitate to contact Ruchi because she can transform your world and your life. Thank you once again for being with me, Ruchi. I am honored and um, I am really uh, impacted by your lessons. Although it was just a few minutes, this interview, I, I feel inspired to, to take up on the world and all the challenges that are coming in front of me. Thank you once again. <laughs> I'm just so glad. Thanks to the universe. There is nothing this conspires to make things happen that you really desire from your heart. And when it's time for somebody's growth, the right people just come in front of you. For example, I've learned a lot from you. Um, yeah. Nothing <laughs> happens just... without a reason. This is all, something I always say to myself. And there is uh, always something else happening at the end of the road, at the end of the path. Thank you once again, Ruchi, for being with me. And uh, for those of you listening to us, stay connected because there is so much more to come. You learned already a lot about leadership, about mindset in business, happiness and marketing, but there is so much more to come. Stay connected.